Hey what's up you guys, it's Jess EDS here. I know I've uploaded today already, um, but I have an extra special, really cool surprise, a little treat for you all. Um, I had give, been given the privilege to do a speech at a conference at the zoo, and so I'm going to be sharing it with you guys. I have permission from them to do so, and... Um, um, the conference was um, for a company called Niwai. They do um, they help people with mental health. And I'm not ashamed. I have mental health. Um, I have depression and anxiety due to my illnesses and my autism. So I get help. And um, they had asked me to speak for them. And I did. And um, so I'm going to be showing you footage of my speech. My whole entire speech that I did. And um, there'll be some, I'll show you just, there was a cool tiger that I got to film. So I'll show you some, I'll show you the footage of the tiger. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video that you're about to see. And guys, if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. And please turn on those post notifications. It really, really helps because um, you'll get notified every single video that I make and um, I know I haven't uploaded in a while and now you're suddenly getting a second video during the day but um, don't worry I'm gonna try and make my videos more consistent it's just really hard when I you know this is today's one of my good days and I'm feeling not too bad but you know um, there's a lot of a lot of the days where I have 90% of my days are where I'm feeling terrible, I'm feeling crappy, my stomach hurts, you know, my back hurts, everything is to the extreme. Basically, my my body works one way or the other. I'm feeling pretty good or I'm feeling really crappy. There is no in-between for me. It is either one extreme or the other. So it's like, you know, today's a good day. I'm bringing out two videos. And uh, here you go. Thank you guys for watching this video. And if you like it, um please share it please subscribe thank you guys for watching enjoy the video see you next time bye and guys just a quick side note i am wearing a face mask um you'll see it looks just like this except it's a different color and i wear this because i have a very very low immune system so when i go out in public i wear one of these to protect myself from getting any viruses or any colds or flus or anything um because my immune system just can't fight it so i wear one of these so you will see that in my video because normally i'm at home filming but when i go out, i was out i was out in public of course so I, I had to wear this so the video quality is as best as it can be the audio quality is as best as it can be my mum was the one filming it and i will add a cute little picture that me and my mum took and um, yeah, enjoy the video. I just said I would add that in. But thanks, guys. Bye. Speak here today and any fellow so for organising everything for me. Um, so that is that where I get to start. Hello, my name is Jessica. I'm 23 years old, but before I tell you my recovery story and how you might have helped me, I thought it might be wise to tell you my story. I was born with a rare disease. So I was down syndrome type 6. 
or EDS for sure. I am also autistic and moderately intellectually disabled. I also have 38 more medical diagnoses, including scoliosis, which means my spine is in an S shape. Typhosis, which my neck cannot bend back as far as it should because of the hump on, on my neck. And low basis is that the bottom of my spine is sunken in so much that my spine is pressing up against my spinal sac and nerves. There are six types of EDS. Type 1, 2 and 3 are common types. 4, 5 and 6 are rare. EDS in itself is rare. Type 6 is one of the rarest types. It comes with many things, many problems and many worries. In my case, EDS type 6, I was born with a mutation called Clod 1. A gene that messes with collagen, a glue that basically sticks your whole body together. Without it, it causes many things to go wrong, such as dislocations and organs not working how they should. The little collagen I have is defective. So everything dislocates. Arms, knees, hips, fingers. It can also make my blood vessels in my body burst and my heart is affected, it is affected as are as are my other organs. My heart, for example, beats, on, beats an extra 364 beats more than yours does. I am borderline SVT, which means my top two ventricles of my heart have too much electricity in them. My dials are stopping to work also, and I am in intestinal failure, which means I cannot eat properly and nutrition is hard for me to get. There is no cure for EDX. There has been no pain relief that eases my pain. But I do not give up. My goal has always been to help others with EDX and all types of disabilities. And to be able to get awareness out there for all rare diseases. As there are over 11,000 rare diseases and they all need to be acknowledged and helped as much as possible. A lot of rare diseases like mine are terminal. We deserve a life full of promise and hope. One of the things I have done to try and help others is I have written and published a book called Don't Call Me Disabled, I'm Just Like You. Unfortunately, I was not treated correctly by the publishers, so I've had to pull my book. So with all my physical health issues, and me also needing help with my autism, I started getting terribly depressed and extremely anxious. That's where Nimai came in. I have roughly been with Nimai for five years. At the start, my mental health wasn't great. Things were hard to deal with. I worked very hard with my support worker, doing goals, setting new goals, working on emotions to achieve these goals. We used the compass and map to set SMART goals. SMART stands for F is for specific, M is for meaningful, A is for achievable, R is for relevant, and T is for time bound. My support worker and I set small and achievable goals for the week. Some of the goals I have set and still focus on are memory, facial recognition, and managing my sensory overload due to my sensory processing disorder. Over the years, I have achieved many things including improvements in my anxiety and depression. For an example on how much I have improved two years ago, if I were asked to do a speech, I just wouldn't have been able to. My social anxiety would have just been too high. I never used to be able to hold a conversation or talk to new people. Now look at me. I'm here in front of you talking. <laughs> I, and I'm sharing my story. So to be able to see my support worker on a weekly basis and having been able to have someone to vent to, to be able to have someone to talk to, someone who actually listens, I think that is the most important thing. Having someone you trust and can talk to is important. Both me and my support worker put in 50-50. We both work really hard and because of all this hard work, is allowed me to achieve and grow as a person. Throughout my weekly sessions, my support worker has helped me deal with my constant pain and nausea. 
Our thoughts are still filled them, but learning strategies such as distraction to try and distract myself can help. Mental health, rare diseases, and all types of disabilities need organisations like NEMA to help. Unfortunately, there is still such a huge gap. There are not a lot of help or options available out there for mental health. And thousands of people like me who are differently able need to be able to access support to help us. I want to get the word out there to get people educated and to learn, as knowledge is power and power gets things done. The more the word is out there, the better our future will be for all that need help. There is no shame in needing help. It takes a lot of strength to put your hand up and say, I need help. The one thing I have learned is never, never give up. You are worth the fight. Please reach out to someone and ask them if they are okay and help them know it is okay. Thank you for your time today. Is there any questions? Thank you. Will you get your book published? Oh, I, I got my book published. Uh, I think it was 2016. June. <coughs> But unfortunately, I had to get it pulled because the publishers weren't keeping it correctly. Maybe we can change that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to get, I had, I do hope to get it out there still. So. Mm. It, it, it's a struggle with that. Is there any other question? Jess, have you had any experience in NDIS yet? Um, yes, I have. Um, I've been accepted through the NDIS. However, um, we're still going through different um, meetings to, to, to get it sorted properly. Um, but with the mental health side of things, it is very hard because unfortunately there is hardly any organisations out there, especially in the area where I live, that are NDIS ready. So it, it is extremely hard to manage, be able to manage my mental health and be on the NDIS. Is there any more? Yes. Yes. What would you yes. say would be the thing you're most proud of yourself about on your journey so far? I am most proud of myself. It's a bit tricky because there are quite a few things and I'm proud of myself. But I'd say the most, the most thing that I'm proud of myself is that I don't give up and I push through everything even though I've got pain, even though I've got all these extra things. And on top of my mental health, I, I just don't give up. And I think that's what I'm most proud of because I could easily just say, you know what, this is too hard, I'm going to give up. But I don't, and that's what I think I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Jess, you mentioned, uh, or they mentioned that you were doing some fundraising? Um, yeah. Um, so, um, two years ago, I set up a GoFundMe because I... I needed um, specialised treatment in the US because there is a clinic in Baltimore um, and they specialise in my rare disease, Alistair syndrome. And um, because here in Australia, the doctors, they, they don't know um, hardly anything about it and um, it's very hard to get any sort of treatment because they don't understand it. They, they just kind of uh, push it off and so the hardest thing about it is when doctors don't understand something, they tend to push it off to mental health and they put it down to mental health even though I have proof. It is very difficult. So that's why we have to raise the money um, to go to Baltimore to get treatment done um, because I just can't get help yet. And it's not going to kill me, but it will help me be more comfortable in my life. Is there any more questions? Thank you, Jess. That was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Beautiful.